Hey, how's everyone? Uh, my name is Chris Hopwood. I'm the North American Marketing Manager for GT Bicycles. Uh, today I'm going to take you through a couple of new products for us for 2012. Uh, we're going to start off with the Old Man BMX line, as we call it. Um, this is something that we started looking back to 1986. It's an era for us that um, you know really brings us back to our heritage. Um, a lot of people really resonate with this time. They really uh, looked for this product. As you can see on eBay, people sell performers that are complete for over $1,000 to $2,000, depending on the quality and how nice the bike is. Um, so right here is the 2012 GT Performer. Obviously, the biggest thing that you notice is that it has 26-inch wheels. Um, we still make a bike with 20-inch uh, for the guys that want to go rip it in the park. Um, but what we wanted to do is make a plan a bike that was something a little bit more than just a street BMX bike. We wanted to make something that could be used as a commuter, a fun bike. You can jump it off curbs, kind of your super commuter, and it has a lot more style than your average 700C bike. Um, just like you've noticed, um, chrome frame, um, that was asked by a lot of people to bring that back. Um, we have the graphic kits, very, very similar to what you saw in 1986 as well as uh, color matched rims, hubs, um, and all the other little bits. Um, overall the frame is very traditional as far as the look. It was just expanded to be a 26 inch model. Um, extremely fast, very fun, um, and has some really you know, durability pieces that will allow you so that you actually can use it for urban use. Uh, from there we have the Interceptor. And the Interceptor uh, was bikes hails from the same exact era. Um, but what we did with this product was instead of making a full-on uh, urban bike, we set it up so that it was uh, a little bit more durable. We achieved that through the frame. So it has a 100% chromoly tube uh, frame set, as well as uh, integrated headset, very similar to what you see on pretty much any uh, freestyle BMX bike today. Um, as well as we put in a standard bottom bracket, three-piece crank, um, machined uh, chain wheel, as well as nicer seat post and saddle, and then all the other graphic packages to match to match the era for the bike. Uh, in front of me we have a brand new product for us. Um, this is the 2012 Zaskar 100. Um, just as the Zaskar name has basically been our heritage bike, been the bike that's won a downhill as far as a hardtail, uh, but we wanted to kind of use that name to indicate what was our cross country and race product. Um, so pretty much anything going forward that we make for cross country or for race will have a Zaskar moniker. Um, what you're going to notice first of all is that the bike looks similar to a marathon, but that's far from true. Um, that was the exact bike that we were designing to replace this with or replace that bike with. And one of the things that we managed to do is through tube shapes, carbon layup, uh, re-engineering of the iDrive system, as well as a component uh, spec as far as carbon uh, dropouts uh, for the frame, um, basically, and then the carbon post mounts for the rear triangle. We were able to drop 500 grams in weight from a medium marathon to the new Zaskar 100. So you're going to get a bike that is considerably stiffer in the front ends, torsionally, laterally stiffer in the bottom bracket, as well as a lot lighter. So that just means more fun. Um, the other thing you'll notice too is we also changed the rear shock. It has a little bit longer eye to eye, as well as a longer stroke. Um, we changed the leverage ratio specifically so that the bike had more small bump compliance, as well as at the end of the stroke, the ramp up wasn't as harsh. Uh, we wanted to make it so that if you did buy this as your trail bike, it was a fun bike to ride. Um, not everyone wants a bike that you can just race. You want something that is also fun, durable, lightweight, and you can just have a good time on it. And then you want to go on the weekend, go out and go race. Um, the other thing, inch and a half to inch and an eighth head tube. Um, that was one of the design uh, durability features that we added as well as uh, carbon layup, which is hard to see with the paint. Um, but there was a lot of work done there to ensure that the frame was very, very strong, very durable, and would be tried, true, and reliable.
Okay, so um, as I was saying, how we kind of uh, redid the uh, the iDrive system for this bike specifically compared to the Marathon. What we did is we got, actually got rid of the flex plate, which had a finite lifespan. We added the carbon eye link there, or dog bone. Um, just a lot more durable, a lot stiffer. It actually does help the rear end as far as lateral stiffness. Um, and then what we also did as well is redesign the whole rear end so it's one piece um, and then put all the pivots in line with each other. So everything is really, really low, low center of gravity, very stiff, um, and we probably have one of the simplest, most durable pivot systems on the market. The bearings that are in here are the exact same bearings that you have in the top part of your 1 and 1 8 headset. They're just a 45 degree headset bearing. You can buy them at any shop, including BMX shops. Put those babies in, tighten that down with a 6 and 8 mil to where you get the tension correct. 4 mil pinches it off. Don't have to worry about it. Very, very simple, tried, true, reliable. Component spec wise, you have uh, an SLX XT uh, component package. It's a 2x10. Uh, we have the really, really nice new uh, formula. Um, RX brakes, um, external reach adjustment. Um, you know, they're great brakes, super lightweight, tons of modulation, um, and amazing stopping power. We have the uh, new Reba RL, um, lockout, dual air, um, what everyone knows, DT Swiss rims, spokes, and um, the SRAM uh, 2x10 uh, crank set. And then uh, crank rollers, uh, cobalt bar and seat post and synchro stem round out the package. So in front of me we have the 2012 Zaskar Carbon Niner Pro. Uh, for 2012 we will have two models, we'll have the Pro and the Expert. Um, but for the press camp we wanted to showcase the Pro model because it would be the higher level model that we will bring into the United States. This will be offered as a frame set as well, um, just to let you know. So when we were first started looking at this bike, the biggest thing is it had to be a true Zaskar. It had to be durable, um, and it had to have that cool aesthetic um, that the name inspires. So when we started looking at everything, same as same stuff we we're doing with Zaskar 100, inch and a half, inch and an eighth, allowed us to basically have a wider, stiffer front end, torsionally very, very stiff. Um, at the same time as well. Kind of goes down to the bottom bracket, still maintaining a very big bottom bracket area, but maintaining a traditional bottom bracket shell. There's, very, there's a lot of uh, bottom bracket systems out there these days, um, so we just opted to go with the one that most people can find the parts for. Um, as you can see, still maintains the triple triangle. Um, that's part of the heritage. It's something we wanted to maintain. Um, the Zaskar is one of the only bikes that you basically you can have with no paint can be sitting against the wall and everyone knows it's a GT. Uh, from there as well, we also used um, basically bolt-on dropouts. Uh, these are one-piece dropouts. Um, super lightweight, machined, uh, but also adds to just some stiffness in the rear end. Um, and then from there, basically it's full XT, 2012 2x10 XT. Um, lightweight, shifts great, very, very smooth. Um, you have the new Formula R1 brakes for 2012. Um, these are basically lighter uh, than you, what you would see as far as the previous bike, the Zaskar 100 with RXs. Um, just a lighter system, still just as much power, great modulation, very, very reliable. Then the other nice new part about the bike as well is the 2012 SID 29er. Um, this is a fork I know a lot of people have been looking forward to seeing. Um, it's going to bring the weight down on your fork compared to what else has been out there available from RockShox. Um, still air sprung, has a lockout as well as the gated blow off control. Rebound adjustment is underneath. Um, and it's 100 mil of travel. It's going to be something that also allows you, since it has a 15 mil through axle, there's plenty of wheel systems out there that are available. Uh, but it will also stiffen up the fork. What we chose for wheels are uh, with M1800 uh, DT Swiss uh, wheel set, uh, and that is their all mountain 29er wheel set. We could expect something a little bit lighter, would increase the price of the, the bike, but at the same time, 
for all those of you that are just having a bike to ride, what you're going to see is a rim that has a wider profile, allows you so that even these are 2.1 tires, they sit in a more correct position. Um, same, you can run up to a 2.3, 2.4, but you're starting to see that in the 29er uh, tire range these days, and it's going to allow the tire to actually sit correctly and actually perform correctly instead of being really pinched in uh, on the rim. Uh, from there, once again, uh, Crank Brothers uh, bar and seat post, Synchro stem, WTB Silverado saddle with Tramali rails, uh, very lightweight, very comfortable. Um, and then just another cool little hint, uh, basically lock-on GT foam grips with the wings. Um, so if you're looking for a really sweet 29er that you're going to have a lot of fun on, as well as probably one of the best paint jobs you're going to see out there of any of the bikes in 2012 from any company, I'd say come take a look at a GT. So right here in front of me we have the 2012 Fury Alloy 2.0. Uh, this is a bike we're extremely excited about. Um, as everyone knows, mountain bike racing, BMX racing is our heritage, uh, especially on the gravity side for mountain bike. Um, everyone knows that the Fury Carbon is out there. Um, it's the only full carbon downhill bike that has won a World Cup. And uh, what we wanted to do is basically bring that same technology, same feel, um, but to a lower price point so we can reach a wider audience of people. Um, you know, the bike park um, scene is really starting to grow all across the country, across the world. Um, we want something so that more people can get on bikes, more people can enjoy it, um, as well as more shops and demo centers can actually have a less expensive bike that will still perform like a World Cup product. Um, one of the things that we didn't have to give up on any of this is performance as well as durability. Obviously when you look at the bike, if you're familiar with our line, it looks very similar to the GT Ruckus 7. Um, and that's because we actually started off with a very similar front triangle as far as the construction process. It's a monocoque front end. Um, we did definitely extend it and beefed up the gussets, uh, you know, for the head tube as well. Uh, but the one thing that we did do completely different from the Rocket 7 was that we actually made it so that it's the exact same geometry for what Mick, Mick Hanna and Mark Beaumont and Eric Carter are using when they're racing their bikes. Um, so what this allows you to do is you basically have a bike that costs a lot less. I'll be retailing for $3,150. Um, has the exact same eye to eye, same strokes, same leverage ratio, everything. So as far as performance on the rear end, um, you're going to get the exact same performance. Um, that right there is controlled by the Marzocchi Sirocco R. Um, really good performing rear shock uh, for an entry level rear suspension. Uh, fork wise, at the Marzocchi, it's the Triple Eight RV. Same thing, it has a re external rebound adjustment. Um, but extremely good open oil bath system that's going to give you very, very durable results. Um, that's one of the biggest things that you need, especially on an entry level bike. Especially if you're getting into it, you don't want to have to do all your tech yourself. You just want something that you can get out and ride, and it's going to be durable. Uh, from there, exact same iDrive system that you see in the Fury. Nothing different from the Fury Carbon, excuse me, but nothing different at all compared to what you see on that bike. We basically just took the exact same system. So just like the Zaskar 100 uh, that I showed you, this has uses the exact same pivots, it just uses an inch and a half headset bearing. Same thing, controlled basically by pivot tension. So you dial that in until it gets where you want it to be. Tighten down the pinch bolts, and then your suspension your rear pivots are set. Um, besides that, we have other components to round out the spec. Um, basically, we use some Avid Elixir 3 brakes, um, and then the SRAM X5 uh, rear derailleur and shifter. Um, from there, basically everything else, we just have a good wheel set, it's going to be durable. Um, and then you also get Minion DH DHFs uh, with the 3C compounds, so it's going to be very, very good tires, which is one of the most important things on a downhill bike. Um, and then uh, STG saddle and seat post. So it can be durable, especially if you dump it. Um, the SGD stuff is very, very durable uh, with the I-beam rail setup. And, um, but this is a bike we're very excited for everyone to test ride, so look for uh, the GT demo trucks out there, and look for our test centers at Highland, Angel Fire, and Les Alpes if you're in France, and that's what we have for GT bicycles for 2012 at the Lifeboat Press Camp.